Okay, here's the introductory lecture on social inequality for urban sociology, West Virginia State University. Um, we're going to be talking a little bit about um, structured inequality, and more specifically social class later, but I want to use this as an introduction. So you do not have a handout on this, so you'll want to take some notes on some paper or you know, put it on your laptop or you know your phone, type it in, however you want to do that. Okay, uh, social stratification. Social stratification essentially is structured inequality, and you'll hear me talk about this a little bit more um, in, in, the, in the PowerPoint video lectures that you'll see soon. But society is essentially layered. We talk about stratification. Think of the word strata. Strata literally translates to layer. Society has many different layers, and we can look at stratification in cities as well as in uh, non-urban places or rural places. But society is layered just like trees or rocks or cakes. You can see the different layers of this tree trunk. That one as well. Um, you can see, hopefully my camera will catch that, you can see the different layers of the rock. This is a rock that has been cut in half. There's another image of a rock that's been cut in half. That might be a better, um, a better picture for you to see. You can see the different layers there. And obviously a cake has different layers. I thought that was kind of cool because I like cake. Who doesn't like cake, right? So we see that the different layers, and the same is true for society, and we'll talk about what that means. A society has different layers, and they are unevenly distributed, but in a systematic fashion. So we'll talk about how they are unevenly distributed. People at the top tend to get a little bit more than the rest. People at the bottom tend to get a little bit less than the rest. So we'll, we'll talk about that. So, how does this system of social stratification unfold and become institutionalized? You may ask. Well, we'll, we'll talk about that. First of all, here's how stratification works. I'll adjust my camera just a bit. We have two basic types of differences in the world. We have physical differences and we have social differences. And we'll start with physical differences. Uh, right off the bat, we notice that people are physically different. Some people are taller, and some people are shorter, as you can see. Another example of a physical difference, some people are bigger and others are smaller in terms of build. So there you see. One more example of a physical difference, uh, skin color or skin tone. Some people have lighter skin and others have darker skin. So you can kind of see the differences. Now what happens, it's not, I'm going to back up just for a second here. Oops. It's not inherently worse to be short, worse than to be short than it is to be tall. It's not inherently worse to be larger or than it is to be thinner. And certainly it is not inherently worse to have darker skin color and lighter skin color. However, what we start doing is assigning status or importance to these differences. And then we start ranking these differences. So somewhere along the line we start deciding it's better to have light colored skin than it is to have dark colored skin. Or it's better to be thin than it is to be overweight. Or somehow it's better to be taller than it is to be shorter. Now we also have social differences. So we're moving from physical to social. Uh, some examples of social differentiation. Religion. Uh, we have some who are, for example, Christian and others who are Muslim. Occupation is another example of social differences. Uh, we have some who are doctors and others who are custodians. Uh, yet one more or two more examples rather of social differences income or wealth we have some who have a lot of wealth or command large incomes and those who have very little wealth or command very low incomes so there you go our rich guy up there on the left and then our poor people here at the bottom right now again it's not inherently worse to be I'm going to back up here just for a second it's not inherently worse to be a Muslim compared to being 
a nun or an Orthodox Jew. However, we have somewhere along the way decided as a society that we're going to assign more status to Christians than we are to people of different faiths. Occupation. Again, we need janitors just as much as we need doctors. However, we have decided to assign more status or importance to doctors. Therefore, they make more money and they reap more benefits um, of and from society. And certainly we assign more status to people who have money and wealth as compared to or as opposed to people with without much or anything. So again, we're assigning status and we're ranking these differences. Um, again, just to kind of recap, we decide that it's better to be taller, to be thinner, to have lighter colored skin. We decide it's better to be Christian or to be a doctor or to be rich. Now, this process of, of assigning status and ranking these differences becomes hardened or institutionalized. It's like if you have a big slab of concrete, you put your handprint in it, kind of like, like that. It's going to dry that way. It's going to stay that way. This process of ranking becomes institutionalized and it becomes hardened and it becomes the way things are in society. It's very difficult to, to change that. Everything is ranked sort of hierarchically. Um, any of the attributes that we've talked about. I mean, you can see it within an organizational structure with the person on the top, and then you've got people right under the boss or the CEO, all the way down to the entry level people with very low status. High status up here, lower status down here. So, again, it becomes very difficult to change this system of social stratifications, whether we're talking about cities or society overall. Um, characteristics of stratification systems, and you'll want to uh, to jot these down. I'm going to try to get a little bit closer here with my camera, if I can. Hopefully we can see that. I think we can. Um, social stratification describes the structured ranking of individuals and groups, and their grading into horizontal layers or strata. A social stratification depends on, but is not the same thing as, social differentiation. Uh, the process by which a society becomes increasingly specialized over time. Uh, where people can change their status uh, with relative ease, sociologists refer to this arrangement as an open system. And we live in what's called an open system. You can change your social status. Uh, we can think of people who have moved up and down the class system. Maybe they start in the lower class, they work their way up to the middle class, or maybe they start in the middle class and they fall down into the lower class or the poor class. We'll talk about that later. People who cannot change their status with relative ease, like in a caste system, for example, um, like in India, refer to that arrangement as a closed system. So again, we live in an open system. And we can argue to what extent people can move around or up and down the class system or up and down the, the, the ladder, if you will, if you want to use that, that analogy. Um, some more characteristics of stratification systems. Um, there are four basic principles of stratification, uh, and you want to make sure you have these in your notes, and you can pause this video at your, however you want to do that. Uh, social stratification, first of all, is a trait of society, not simply a function of individual differences. A social stratification persists over generations. However, most societies allow some social mobility or changes in people's position in a system of social stratification. A social mobility, third point. Social mobility may be upward, downward, or horizontal. So sometimes people don't necessarily move up or down. They can actually move cross or horizontally. We can talk about that. Um, social stratification is universal, but it is also variable. So in other words, what that means, social stratification exists within every society. Even in closed systems, like a caste system, there's still some inherent assigning of status and ranking. Um, and this, so this process is universal, but it is variable. The way that each society will stratify is different. Uh, social stratification involves not just inequality, but beliefs, uh, norms, values, ideologies, uh, all, beliefs. All of those factor into the social stratification system of each society. And we're going to call that the end of the first part of the intro lecture here for social inequality. Thank you.